Good morning, good morning. We are on Be With Jesus 365, and I'm so glad that you're here. I'm Mark, nice to be with you. I'm just sensing God is doing something amazing in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm excited for what God's doing in you and what he's doing through you. And I want these to be an encouragement to your life, to, what, to just uh, this whole idea of meeting with God every single morning and spending our first, the very, very first part of our day with Jesus, just building our day around our relationship with him. I'm so excited for what God is doing in you. I want this again to be an encouragement to your time alone with God, what he's doing in you and through you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to talk today. Yesterday we had technical problems. So I'm kind of recovering uh, what we did yesterday again today uh, because the internet was so poor that we were having such a bad connection. But we're talking about growth and we're talking about change. We all want to grow, but this idea of change can be challenging when we think about actually changing, becoming something new. And I was thinking about a woman who was in a class who made this testimonial statement in the class. It was so powerful. We had started the 40-day worship challenge on, uh, on the first week of the class. And she had met with the Lord every single morning for seven days. And she came back to class and she raised her hand. And I thought she was going to share how what was happening in that time alone with God in the morning, how, what, how meaningful it was, the things that were happening inside of her heart, what she was journaling, what she was beginning to experience. But this is what she said. She said, you know, this week my boss came up to me and said, what are you doing? Something is changing in your life. And she was so impacted by that because the boss, her boss, had noticed such a difference in such a short period of time of meeting with Jesus. Just being with him was changing her heart in such a significant way that it began a process of her understanding that as she was meeting with him, Something fresh and new was happening inside of her and bringing about this dynamic change. And it's out of our innermost being in the morning that flows a river of living water. It, there's, a, there's a release of something fresh and something new that happens inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit being released as we surrender our will over to God's will. And he wants to, God wants to bring growth and change into our life. This is so beautiful. We just need to think about this as such a positive action that God wants to take in our life, not to leave us the same, but bring about growth, bring about change, bring about transformation, bring about a renewing of our mind in such a fresh and new way every single day. And then the accumulative effect of meeting with him every day brings about this permanent transformation in our life. This is the work of the Holy Spirit inside of our heart. We've got to think about this as a dynamic relationship that we have with the creator of the universe. He's placed his Holy Spirit inside of us. Isn't that an extraordinary thought? Just as we think about that, that we are, 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 are carriers of the Holy Spirit, lives inside of us, and he's doing a work of grace inside of our life. Romans 12, 2 says this, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. We don't want to do that. But then it says, but let God transform you. Isn't that a powerful thought there? And let, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Isn't that dynamic that God wants to change us, transform us? That word transform there is metamorphosis. And that means to be completely different, not anything like you were. He's changing us from, from where we were to where he wants us to be. And it's something so new, something so completely different. 
And it's like from a, a caterpillar, that thought is a, a caterpillar to a butterfly or a polywog to a frog, that there's nothing that resembles what was in what is. And this is what's so beautiful. God's doing a work of grace inside of our hearts. And, and it's actually changing the way we think. That's why the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As we think, we'll become. And so there's a transforming work of our thought life. That's what repentance means. It just means a change of thinking, to think like God thinks. And that's what's so powerful about his word in our life. And so this is so exciting. And then the scripture goes on to say this, then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect. As he changes us, he's revealing his perfect will to us. I love to say this statement, knowing God is knowing. As we know him, as we get to know him through his word and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he's revealing in our hearts his will and purpose for our life every single day. It's, again, this is something so powerful that's happening inside of our heart. It's a work of transformation, complete metamorphosis. That is what we want. God to change us into his image and into his character and into his nature. He wants transforming who we are to reflect who he is in this earth. And that's what's so uh, dynamic. God's at work in us. Just think about that this morning. God's working in you. He's doing something brand new. It's not your effort it, to make it happen, to, to fix yourself. It's God's desire as we surrender our heart over to his to bring about a renewing, a refreshing, a strengthening, a transforming, all these beautiful words that describe what the Holy Spirit's doing inside of us. Growing in God as a result of his grace, his love for us, his power, working in us. It's, it's, it's so uh, simple to think about, but yet it's a dynamic process that's occurring in our heart every moment of every day. And it starts in the morning as we seek him first, and we, as we give him our first. The Bible says we're like trees planted next to a river. Think about a tree planted by a river of living water. Think about that, how powerful that is. I was thinking about an arid condition. I just drove through uh, a, a desert uh, uh, last week or week before, and I was noticing how everything's just scrub and it's small bushes and it's just barely surviving. And then you'll come upon a place where there's green and it's lush and the trees are taller, bushes are bigger, and it looks beautiful, and it kind of meanders, and then you know there's a river there. There's water that's coursing through that desert. There's water, and it's producing uh, life on both sides of the banks because it's the life that's in the water. It's in the nutrients. It's in, the, it's in all that is flowing, and I'm just so inspired by each one of us that we're trees planted by the river of living water, that we're by God and God's presence is doing something powerful in us each and every moment. Let me read this passage to you from Psalms 1, 1 to 3 that describes this planting. And it says, oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. So that's us thinking and rethinking about God's word all day. That which we, that which we take in in the morning, we're thinking about and rethinking about all day. But this is the result. This is the result within us, through us abiding, through us being with him, through us being in proximity, they are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. And I was thinking about that whole idea of trees planted and the growth 
We don't control the weather. The weather around us can do all kinds of things. We can go through all kinds of circumstances, situations, trees go through. In fact, when they're in the harshest conditions, it's strengthening the tree. But, but, but that strength is coming from the root system that's down in proximity to the river, that's pulling up the nutrients, the water, that's pulling up the, uh, the, uh, 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 what's in the soil. It's so powerful when you think about it. And that tree's growing stronger and stronger and stronger, season after season. And this is what's so uh, real that you and I are growing in God. We're growing each time we spend time in his presence. In Jeremiah 17, five to eight, it describes it like this. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited, salty land. But listen to this. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord, and they have made the Lord their hope and their confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that grow down, which reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Think about that. That no matter what that tree goes through on from the external, from the weather, because those roots are down deep into the soil of God's love, deep into the soil of, of his presence, that tree is producing fruit continually. It never stops producing that's a picture of our lives. That's the key to growth and change. It's to be in God's presence continually. It's to be drawing from his strength, drawing from his grace. And it, it's simple in that passage. It just talks about putting our confidence in the Lord, putting our trust in him, putting our faith in him, relying on him, depending on him putting our, 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 our all into him. And then he's doing that which is working in us to change us and grow us by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what's so dynamic. It's what's so real in our hearts as God is doing that by his spirit. This speaks, of course, of proximity, of closeness, just staying near. Just putting our confidence. I was thinking when it talked there of trust in that passage in Jeremiah where it talked about trusting the Lord. And that's what brings about this dynamic change in our life. I was thinking about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will show you which path to take. That's what's so beautiful. God will show us the path. He'll show us where to go. He'll show us what to do. He'll lead us and guide us by his precious Holy Spirit. And we will be uh, growing and changing in the process. And that's what's so powerful. So let me talk one more, uh, one more scripture about roots. It's so powerful. It's in Ephesians 3.17. Because we're thinking about a tree. We're thinking about our roots going down deep near the river of God, staying close to his presence. We're talking about fruit that's being produced and growing up. And so think of that picture as you think of this in, in Ephesians 3.17. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down. Your, let me say it again. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. That's the picture I want to leave with you, Dave. Your roots will grow down deep into God's love, and they will keep you strong because you will be abiding by the river of living water. This is the key to growth and change. This is our key to being transformed from the inside out. 
And it's as simple as surrendering our life over to the Lord. I love to think about the five roots, surrender, trust, humility, faith, and thanksgiving. Just growing our roots down into God's love. And that's what's so powerful. Now, this is bringing about spiritual formation. And so this was part one of a two-part series. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you a part two. It looks like our internet held. So I'm going to give you tomorrow part two of growth and change. And that will be fun to be together. Now, if you like this, hit the like button. If you uh, want to be in this community going forward, just encouraging each other to spend time alone with God and to be with him and to grow and change as he is leading and guiding us. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, there's other videos down in the description. You can look at those. I believe I placed in their spiritual formation uh, uh, or whatever videos are down in the description. There's more, or you can go to Be With Jesus 365. All kinds of encouraging videos there. And if you know somebody that's going through something that needs an encouragement, you feel free to just send this over to them. Let it be an encouragement to them as well. So many people going through so much discouragement, so much heartache in this season. Uh, if you feel like this would be an encouragement to it, send it over. Well, I'm going to pray for you now. And, and uh, I know God's doing something amazing in your life. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. For the growth and the change that's happening in our heart through your spirit. And Lord, we sense as we are just uh, meeting with you that you're doing something transformative inside of our hearts. So Lord, today we surrender our will over to your will. And thank you for the work you're doing within us. And I just thank you for each one listening. I pray, Lord, for your anointing and favor upon their life today. Father, I pray for emotional, mental, spiritual, physical, and relational health. Lord, that you would in, uh, increase every one of those areas. Lord, I thank you for their life. I pray, Lord, if anyone needs a divine healing, a touch physically, Lord, that you would touch that area by the power of your Holy Spirit. If there's a financial need, Father, I pray that you would bring your provision to them. Lord, that you would meet their daily bread today. You would meet their need. Lord, I just pray for anything circumstantially or relationally that's going on. I pray that the power of your anointing would just bring resolution and help and guidance into every area of their life. Lord, I just thank you for your presence with us. We honor you today. We give you the glory. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness and your, and your care of our lives. We give you the glory today in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Well, it was great to be together. I want this again to be an encouragement. Uh, I just, I, I'm so grateful for you. Have an amazing day and I'll see you again tomorrow uh, on the ongoing 40-day worship experience. Bless you.